The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away and go to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, so they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And they went ashore. He saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was, and wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might, that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be known. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had a compassion for them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them. We hear at the beginning of the gospel message this morning about the disciples coming back to see Jesus, and they are on fire because they have been out there in the world preaching and teaching and healing. We're sure that they may well have had some tough experiences, but we also imagine by the writing that they are like set to tell Jesus what's been happening. And hopefully, at least in a few cases, this stuff's really working. And they are just full of the spirit. Modern day language, completely overstimulated and talking too fast and overwhelmed. And Jesus, like any good mentor or leader, looks at them and says, my God, you haven't even eaten. Take a breath. Everybody breathe. Let's just breathe. And let's take a few minutes and go off by ourselves. As he sees his disciples vibrating. Have you ever been in a meeting or a situation or a family gathering where it feels like people are literally vibrating? It will not surprise you one bit that in my head, and sometimes it leaks out my mouth, I just say, let's just all breathe. And so Jesus, at the same time, sees that as his mission and ministry continues to take off, that the people in need of healing just grows. Just like today, the people in need of healing hasn't grown, but the awareness of all those people, their hope and expectation, like, well, maybe this is going to work. Imagine that, the woman who had hemorrhaged for 12 years, my God, 12 years. Imagine her as one of these people that we hear about today. They hurry to find Jesus 
Why? Because they started to have some hope. They weren't even healed yet and they were on fire with the Spirit. They hadn't even met Jesus and they were on fire for the Spirit. They had not touched Jesus yet and yet that hope. They started to have hope that maybe this God incarnate thing was real. They didn't have that language. You may not have that language. But they had hope. They started to hear stories of people healing in body, mind, and spirit. But this is a dangerous message, right? Because we all know people that we wished would be healed. So we need to find our middle way. We need to find our way to be in relationship with God. Jesus looked around and he saw them all and he had compassion for them. What does compassion mean? Compassion isn't pity. We've all felt pity. We might not want to admit it because that's not a pretty word, but we felt it. We looked and we thought, oh, for them. But it's not even a bad thing because it may lead to compassion, but compassion is suffering me. Compassion is walking alongside. Compassion is recognizing that you are part of something larger than ourselves. We as Christians call ourselves, we are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the hands, feet. We are part of the soul of Jesus. We are part of God being present in the world. Imperfectly, the only one we know that we say Jesus was both divine and human, and we know we don't do it perfectly, but we do our best to grow in the light and love of God. How is it that we do that? This summer, uh, a general convention which was held in Louisville, one of, the, um, one of the themes that you kept hearing as people would speak, they would quote Thomas Merton a lot. Because there is a quote from Thomas Merton, which I'll read a part of it in a minute, where he found himself on a street, and if you ever had one of those moments where it just feels like the same old thing that happens every single day feels different. Like maybe you're going for a walk and all of a sudden, stay with me people, all of a sudden the leaves are just fascinating. Take up, stop laughing. All of a sudden, maybe the color in the sky is different. Maybe you just are present in the world in a way you weren't a few minutes ago. Thomas Merton says in Louisville at the corner of 4th and Walnut, in the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all those people, that they were mine and I theirs, that we could not be alien to one another even though we were total strangers. It was like waking from a dream of separateness, of self-isolation in a special world. A moment of waking up from separateness. Put a pin in that. Then imagine everywhere you go and everything you do, people are literally crowding around you because you are their beacon of hope. And you believe, you know in your heart and mind that you are that instrument as Jesus and the disciples were coming to know. It must have been completely overwhelming. My guess is each one of you have had those moments where it's like one more phone call, really? One more text? What was it they thought about that being a good idea? And yet, Jesus looked around and had compassion. 
we hear over and over again in the Gospels about Jesus staying apart and taking space. But how do we do that if we hear that even Jesus looked up and said, okay, it doesn't matter how many, how tired I am, I'm not eating, I'm not doing anything, it just doesn't matter, I, I need to have compassion for everybody that's in need. Don't know about you, but that is a recipe for driving into the ocean. Not because I don't have compassion, not because I hope you don't have compassion, but because we are human and we must do both. We must hold intention how to care for ourselves so that we can notice those places that we have to have compassion, so that we can be present to those people that need our love and care, maybe just our support. There is an Episcopal piece that recently wrote a book named Callie Swallow. And she talks about one of the ways that you can take care of yourself. She says, think about it in terms of spark. The disciples were full of spark. They were like firecrackers going off all over the place. But maybe they needed, Jesus was like, okay, let's, you know, it's like the kids at the, you know, not dating myself, but the kids at the birthday party and everybody's hurrying and everybody's talking. Okay, everybody stop for a second. Spark is good. But she says, think about the S. Think about, she talks about somatic, which is a word now that you can hear a lot about. It is about body. It is about physically being present. It is separate from our mind and spirit, which are equally important. But sometimes when you hear this in all different circles, maybe you just need to get up and go for a walk. Or maybe you need to lie down and take a rest. Maybe you need to move, but we know over and over again the ways that you take care of yourself are tending your physical presence. Remember, Jesus came in physical presence. God gave Jesus a physical body, as we do too. The P is about being prepared. We can't just run willy-nilly around our lives like some of us do. I certainly am guilty of that on more than one occasion in my lifetime. But how is it we can get into our day and feel just a little more grounded? Be prepared for our day. Maybe just if you're a person that has some kind of prayer practice, whatever it is. But go into your day, centering yourself and grounding yourself. Be prepared for the day because there will be people everywhere that need you. And awe, S-P-A. I was never a cheerleader, just couldn't pull it off. But all those times when if you find yourself being able to do these other things, Imagining God, you end up seeing the world in a different way. Not all the time, not in the way Thomas Merton talked about, but the world will feel larger and you will feel more part of it. Because we are not created as individual beings, we are called to be part of something larger. Jesus teaches us that over and over and over again. Retreat, we must step back and spend time with God and prayer and space and creativity and nature. Retreat, what is it that feeds you? Maybe nature is your real church. Maybe if we're lucky, you come here and are part of our community. But maybe going for a walk on the beach or going for a walk in the woods is where you really know that God's present. Make those times. And lastly, kinship. K. We are part of community. We are called to be part of each other. No one individually, no church individually, no particular community can meet all the needs of all those people that are in desperate need of hope that are in need of hope and care 
are in need of all those things that Jesus talks about. So as we imagine this morning, we imagine those disciples, maybe, maybe we're the disciples that are all excited and we just want to tell each other, do it. Maybe we're the person that needs to go for a walk and sit on a rock. It's wonderful. I do it all the time. I'm a big proponent of nature and rocks. Whatever it is that allows you to be both, to be that light of hope, to be that light of Christ in the world that the world needs more today than it ever has. However, you are able to find that place within yourself that when you're out in the world and the world is bustling around you, you don't feel like you want to run for the hills every minute, that you feel like, okay, how is it that with God's help, I can be part of this day in a way that is needed by the holy? Spark. Try it. 